Good morning, First Baptist Church, and welcome to our Sunday School. I'm going to be presenting on praising God for his presence. So just a little bit of the agenda. I'm going to start with an opening prayer. Um, we're going to do an introduction activity, kind of go over the lesson background, scriptures and summary. And then we're going to do some group activities, some personal reflections, and then have some closing remarks. And if we can have an opening prayer by Deacon Aaron Butler. Good morning, everyone. Let us unite our hearts in prayer. Most wise and everlasting Father God, we come to say thank you for this day that you've allowed us to see. Thank you for allowing us to gather this space and this time so that we can study your word and to lift up your understanding of their, by, their, your more perfect way. We ask special blessing on Brother Abraham as he prepared to lead us through this Bible study, Heavenly Father. Give him wisdom and knowledge. Also give us receptive hearts and minds so that we can better understand your perfect will and your way. Heavenly Father, we know that when we're in the presence of Jehovah, hearts are lifted. And as we go for this service, help us to have our hearts lifted as we understand your word. We ask all these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you for that. Um, so we've been on Zoom a little bit. So the laptop or your desktop computer, if you want to unmute yourself, you can just hit the participants or you can raise your hands and somebody from the tech team want to mute you. If you're on your landline or your mobile, you can hit star six to unmute yourself and then star nine to raise your hand or to ask a question. So the first thing we're going to do is a little bit of an introduction activity. So kind of some questions to ponder throughout the lesson today. Where do you call home? How do you describe your home? And how did that place become home? So just think about those questions as we discuss more and more of the lesson. So then we're gonna get into the lesson background. So in unit two, we're learning about being called to praise God. And we've already discussed how to praise God with joy, praising God for ultimate justice, and then praising God for past deliverance. So now our focus is our efforts to praise God for his presence. So first, let's understand why the Psalms were written. The Book of Psalms is a collection of 150 ancient Hebrew poems, songs, and prayers that come from all different periods in Israel. Many of these poems are connected with King David, 73, actually. He was known as a poet and a harp player. But there are many different authors behind these poems. There's poems of Asaph, or from the sons of Korah, and some are from other worship leaders in the temple. Even Solomon and Moses have their own poems, and nearly one-third of these are anonymous. Now, many of these poems came to be used by the choirs that sang Israel's temple, but the book of Psalms is actually not a hymn book. At some point in the period after Israel's exile to Babylon, these ancient poems were gathered together and intentionally arranged into the book of Psalms of Korah. And it has a very unique design and message that you're not going to notice unless you read it from beginning to end. Now, to see how the book of Psalms is designed, it's actually most helpful to start at the end. The book concludes with five poems of praise to the God of Israel, and each one begins and ends with the word hallelujah, which is Hebrew for a command to tell a group of people to praise Yah, which is short for the divine name Yahweh. Now, that's a really nice five-part arrangement, and it looks like someone's giving us a conclusion here to the book. So it invites the question, does the book have any other signs of intentional design? If you pay attention to the headings of the poems, you'll notice that at five places, your Bible translators have the heading book one, book two, book three, four, and five at various points. And that these divide the book into five large sections. Now the reason for this is that the final poem in each of those sections have a very similar ending that looks like an editorial edition. It reads something like, May the Lord, the God of Israel, be blessed forever and ever. Amen and amen. So the book has a conclusion. It has an internal organization into five main parts. And so the natural place to go from here is now the beginning, to look for an introduction. And what do we find? Psalms 1 and 2, which stand outside of Book 1, because most of the poems in Book 1 are linked to David, except Psalms 1 and 2, which are anonymous. Psalm 1 celebrates how blessed the person is who meditates on the Torah, prayerfully reading it day and night and then obeying it. Now the word Torah simply means teaching, and more specifically it came to refer to the five books of Moses that begin the Old Testament. And here actually the word seems to be used with both meanings in mind, which explains why it has five main 
part. The book of Psalms is being offered as a new Torah that will teach God's people the lifelong practice of prayer as they strive to obey God's commands given in the first Torah. Psalm 2 is a poetic reflection on God's promise to King David from 2 Samuel chapter 7, that one day a messianic king would come and establish God's kingdom over the world, defeat evil, and rebellion among the nations. Now Psalm 2 concludes by saying that all of those who take refuge in the messianic king will be blessed, precisely the word used to open Psalm 1. And so together, these two poems tell us that the book of Psalms is designed to be the prayer book of God's people as they strive to be faithful to the commands of the Torah as they hope and wait for the future messianic king. Now with these two themes introduced, we can start to see how the smaller books have been designed as well around these two ideas. For example, Book 1 has right at the center a collection of poems, Psalms 15 through 24, that opens and closes with a call to covenant faithfulness. And then, Psalm 16 to 18, we find a depiction of David as a model of this kind of faithfulness. So he calls out to God to deliver him, and God elevates him as king. Now, in the corresponding set of poems, Psalms 20 to 23, the David of the past has become an image of the messianic king will also call out to God, who will be delivered, and then given a kingdom over the nations. And then right at the center of this collection is a poem, Psalm 19, dedicated to praising God for the Torah. So here we go. The two themes from Psalms 1 and 2 are bound together tightly here. Book 2 opens with two poems that are united in their hope for a future return to the temple in Zion. And this is an image closely associated with the hope of the Messianic King. Then Book 2 closes with a poem that depicts the future reign of the messianic king over all of the nations. This poem is really amazing because it echoes all these other passages from the prophets about the messianic kingdom. And it concludes by saying that this king's reign will bring about the fulfillment of God's ancient promise to Abraham to bring God's blessing to all of the nations. Book 3 also concludes with a poem reflecting on God's promise to David, but this time in light of Israel's exile. So the poet remembers how God said he would never abandon the line of David. But now he's looking at Israel's rebellion and its result and destruction and exile and the downfall of the line of David. And so the poet ends by asking God to never forget his promise to David. All right. So now if we discuss kind of that background a little bit more, Psalm 84 is one of the 17 poems from book three, a total of 11 psalms the sons of Korah were written by them or by King David for them to sing. So this illustrates the sons being musically gifted to sing these praises. So we know that Korah was a descendant of Koath, son of Levi, who had led a rebellion against God, given authority of Moses and Aaron during the Exodus. So Korah and his followers from the member of the tribe of Reuben were put to death as a result of their disobedience. But his descendants were still prominent in the temple worship. So they were considered gatekeepers from the records of service listed below in 1 Chronicles 9 and 19 and 1 Chronicles 26 and 1. So kind of the meeting of the, to the chief musician describes how to instruct a person to use a tone in a way that could be lost to us today. But if we look at the meaning of the phrase upon Gideoth, it's uncertain. Some believe it's likely a musical term, instrument, or reference, or a type of melody and celebration. So now we're going to get into the scriptures and summary. Psalm 84. For the director of music, according to Gatith, of the sons of Korah, the psalm. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may have her young, a place near your altar, Lord Almighty, my King, and my God. All right, so kind of let's, let's break that down a little bit with a little knock-knock, who's there? Turn water to wine. In biology, 
All right, so now let's do a little group activity. Reflection time. What self-evaluation did you do during the pandemic to ensure that you are part of God's house? And if I could have somebody um, from the tech team read the messages in the chat or raise their hand. And for me, myself, the reflection that I had was I realized that many people in my life were not a part of the journey I wanted to embark on. So I decided to let them go. I mean, sometimes you think that somebody is really good for you, and if you really reflect on it and spend time speaking and reaching out to God, he's going to let you know whether they should be in your life or not. So what self-evaluation did you do during this pandemic to ensure that you are part of God's house? You can just write as her hand up. Okay. You can unmute. Can you, do you see that? Yes, Here we go. Good morning, okay. everyone. Yes, this pandemic has really brought a change in me. My husband's neck was always bowed to the Bible, always. Mine is as well. I become so closer to God. And, and, and I feel that there's a presence of him in me daily. I'm, I'm enjoying this pandemic. I, I really am because I'm able to have a conversation and a lifestyle has changed within me. And I am so grateful that I, that I feel this way. And yes, I don't, I don't want it to stop for that reason. Amen. Oh, I am. Woo, Lord, I'm happy. Amen. Amen. All That's right. I'm happy. Woo, Thank yes, you. I am. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Wonderful. All right. Does anybody else have something that they did to ensure that you're a part of God's house? All right. Deacon uh, James uh, raised their hand. Okay. Hmm. Good morning, thanks. This is Deacon James speaking. Um, this pandemic, and let me realize that being in the building is awesome. And I miss the fellowship. But most of all, it let me know that I didn't have to be in the building to fellowship. He gave me a chance to commune with God and let him know church begin with me, not at the building. And this lesson just opened up to me, let me know that there's some things that I thought I was that I need to work on. I just thank God for this. Amen. Amen. All right. So now we're going to move on to the next scripture, which is going to be Psalm 84, 4 through 7. From uh, there's some things in the chat box, too. Are you okay, if you want to go ahead and read those, please. No problem. Thank you. So someone said that they taking time to meditate on God because the pandemic caused a slower pace in life. Okay, wonderful. Sent, sending cards out to members who are bereaved. Amen. Staying in the word, continuing with Bible study and fellowship with other believers. Excellent. Wonderful. More efforts on trying to keep our bodies healthy. There we go. Have they got clean mind, more. clean health. All yes, right. someone said, amen, Deacon James. 
study God's word more, connecting with my fellow believers. And then finally, being there and listening to others, attending Sunday school and Bible study to hear the word. Amen. Wonderful. Wonderful. Seems like everybody's on the right track this morning. So let's go on to the next scripture, which is going to be Psalm 84, 4 through 7. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The autumn rains also cover it with pools. They go from strength to strength till each appears before God in Zion. All right. So how do you yearn for God in your daily devotions? How can we tell someone about the goodness of the Lord church when we don't believe it for ourselves? How can we tell someone that they God our priority? I'm not talking about service. So, okay, but how do you regain strength in your tough times? Now let's get into another group activity. Facing the truth. What are some ways to create a deeper relationship with God to keep his presence in your daily life? Because we know that everyone has a rough day and how easy it is to have a quick brace and refresh our mind or renew it. 
So think about taking a brisk walk in between work to revitalize your mind with God. Think about something that can be done that's different in your routine that you can just say, God, thank you for this. God, thank you for this. And just kind of remember the little blessings he gives us each and every day. So if you want to post in the chat or have your hand raised, what are some ways to create a deeper relationship with God to keep his presence in your daily life? And if I could just have some member of the tech team read those for me. So there's one praying and having faith in the Lord. Amen. Um, I listen to music, so that helps me all the time. All right. <laughs> Amen. Love a good church song. Study his word daily. Pray. Amen. Daily Wonderful. devotions. Excellent. Knowing that you live and move and have your being in him and vocalize your thankfulness for everything that comes into your spirit. Amen. Gotta let people know that you love God. Meditate and have songs on your heart each day. Amen. Amen. So a little bit earlier, we learned about praise break. So let's do one. Now put your hands together if you love the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord if God has done anything for you. If he woke you up this morning, allowed you to have a wonderful breakfast, gave you the activity of your limbs to be here today, to participate in this celebration, to God be the glory for all the things he has done, for what he's doing in our lives right now, and for where he's getting ready to take us. To God be the glory for 245 years of celebrating the historic First Baptist Church of Williamsburg. To God be the glory for everything he's done for us and through us over these last 18 months to survive a pandemic, and we are still here. I need somebody to clap your hands and tell God thank you. All right, so praise break can be anything. It could be a little clip to just give you that little boost you need sometimes in a tough day. So now we're going to move on to Psalms 84, 8 through 12. Hear my prayer, Lord God Almighty. Listen to me, God of Jacob. Look on our shield, O God. Look with favor on your anointed one. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those whose walk is blameless. Lord Almighty, blessed is the one who trusts in you. All right. Amen. So what does your journey look like? So who is your shield and protector? Wow. 
So how do you find his presence? I waited for him to direct me as to which way to go. Yes. I waited for him to direct me so that I could receive his glory. Yes. So I want to let you know, church, you can receive all of his work. Yes. You can receive the glory by working. Yes. You don't have to be one or the other. You just have to learn how to put it together. Yes. And I want to let you know that I've learned how to put it together. It's just a lack of doing it. It ain't easy. It's not easy. It's not. I'm going to say it ain't easy. I want to let you know that regardless of what it is that you're doing, or what it is that you're assigned to do, put God first. And when you put him first, he will be he won't counsel over your life. He won't take you out of the harm. And I want to let you know one thing. I brought a ride on back to school from my trip to California. I found out that there were new things in my life. I found out that God has already renewed my body. And then now I tell you that the ark is really the warm way of life. You have to be able to identify when you're walking and when you're not walking. I want to let you know that he gave me two seats. But I can not walk on the empty ground. I've been so long enough have to step back and wonder where I came from. I don't have to step back and wonder where I'm going. Because now you see my feet. They can shout glory. They can have a good time. I know what it's like to praise them. I tell you, if you don't know how to praise them, you go through the trials and tribulations. You know what you're saying. You know what's going on. But I want to let you know what. My God, he's a good God. Amen, amen. So let's do a little group activity together. You can post in the chat or you can raise your hand. Walking on thin ice. What is the difference between your heart and our church? So if we are the heart of God through our actions, time and dedication to praise his name, the church is just a building that gives us more strength together to praise his name and have him in our presence. The difference is if we don't receive or learn how to acknowledge his blessings, we are still in the valley searching for answers. So what is the difference between your heart and our church? If I could just have one of the tech members um, unmute or read the messages in the chat. Well, two from the previous time is singing okay. anytime and stay in constant communication through prayer. Amen, amen. The church is the fellowship of believers that share a common faith. There should not be a difference. The church building is just a structure. Amen. 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 All and right. Deaconess Wright has... Can you unmute? I wanted there you to go. say, I got it. We want, I wanted to say, we are the church. So to me, there isn't any difference. It is definitely not a building. So if our hearts has changed, it's because God has made it so. And we all should be one. Amen, amen. All right. So time for some personal reflections. Where is God's presence? So how can you receive God's presence? You can read your Bible, you can listen to the Holy Spirit, or you can praise God through music and dance. Those are just some things that you can do for it. But you can always receive his blessings. Just debates. Okay, Pastor. Oh, there she is, there she is, okay. Good morning, First Baptist. Uh, during the pandemic, I never um, 
forgot about who God was in my life and how he's been. Uh, I just give him all the glory, all the credit for everything, even in this pandemic. I didn't live scared in it or anything, but I did what the scientists asked me to do. But I had to pray about this thing because at one point I wasn't there. So I kept on praying and I kept on praying until the Lord said, okay, you know, and I thought about my family and I thought about my grandbaby, my grandkids. And I, I just never lost focus of who he was in my life. And I know he can do anything. Everything is possible through him. So when I know that the Lord is my king and he's my Lord and he's my savior, my healer, I know it's nothing that he can't do. So with this pandemic going on, I just feel like if everybody was on the same page praying about this thing, because I do truly believe that prayers change things. Um, sometimes we want to ha have them to change right right away, but that's not how he operates. And yes, the building, I have always known. My, my mother was, I had a wonderful mother. And she always told me that the building was a place where the people go for to, the church people go to to give God the glory. She's always told me that the building itself was just the building, but it was for the people that love the Lord to go and um, be a part of that. But when I think about God as being my refugee and my provider, my strength, my defender, and my protector, that was one mm -hmm. reason that the pandemic didn't scare me like it probably scared a whole lot of people. I stayed away from people, but I always kept contact with them to let them know it's all about him and it's not about us. It's gonna it's, it's going to get right. It's not gonna be this way all the time. We just have to pray and know that he's gonna do it because he is all those things He's my joy. He's my peace. He's my all in all. So we got to, if we believe in God and we love him like we say we do, we got to know that he, that he knows what's going on because he made us. And that this pandemic is not going to last, but we have to do the right thing. I just want to say that because I feel like uh, God is who he is all by himself and hallelujah that he is all by himself. I'm done. I'm done. Didn't mean to keep up too much time, but I'm finished. Amen. But I had to Thank put you. That down. Thank you for that. Amen. Amen. Let's give Brother Melvin Abraham a round of applause this morning. Did an outstanding job. I tell you, that was wonderful. And when I saw uh, Minister uh, Howard preaching this morning, I just, she got me to rocking on that recording. And I just want to keep on going, but that is a, a wonderful, I want to thank you, Brother Abraham, for using those, those speakers uh, to help explain uh, the lesson this morning. And I think all of us get the picture. I think all of us uh, recognize that it's the presence of God that's most important. It is not the structure, it is not the building, it is not the temple, the physical brick and mortar, even though uh, we have those things. But God does not need those things. We the one need uh, the covering outside of the elements, but God does not need that. So we are the temple. And this is what uh, this lesson is conveying to us. And this is what Bro Brother Abraham been teaching us this morning, that is God's presence. It's his presence in our lives. And I just would not want a God that if I just came into a building and his presence was there, and then I leave that building and his presence is no longer with me, I'm in trouble. I want God's presence to be with me all the time, whether I am in the church building, when I come out of the church building, in my going and coming, uh, when I'm walking along the way, I want God's presence to always be with me and always be with you. So we don't just want to centralize God's presence, that we got to get there. Now, I understand that, that the church building is important for a lot of people. It's important for God's people. We come together. 
but we do what we do in the building to invoke God's spirit to come in among us. But we don't have to be in the building for that to happen. What about all of the buildings that burned down? Y'all remember there was a time when they were burning down church buildings, but people were still having church right beside the burned down building. We don't have to have a building. God can enter in everywhere. I don't know about you, but when I start thinking about the goodness of the Lord, even when I'm in the shower, I start feeling the presence of God. So I just want us to understand wherever we are, God's presence is with us. And that's what we need. We need his presence with us. Whether we are inside, outside, in the prison, in the palace, uh, 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 even when David says, if I make my bed in hell, that's the worst place. You don't want to go to hell. But David said, even if I make my bed in hell, behold, uh, he's there. So again, we got to understand it's his presence. It's God's presence that makes all of the difference. Think about the temple that uh, Solomon built. It was magnificent. All of that gold, all of, it was magnificent. But what happened to it? It got burned down. It got burned down. So again, when they built the temple again, it did not have all of that magnificence. It didn't have all of that gold. It didn't have the state of the art like the previous temple did. But God was telling them, I don't want the brick and mortar. I want you. I want to live inside of you. So wherever you go, I'm there. I want to be inside of you. I want to have a constant fellowship with you. So if you go in the building, I'm with you. Outside the building, I'm with you. In prison, I'm with you. Everywhere you go, it's the fellowship with us that he is after. We are the what? Sister Wright said it this morning. We are the temple. Deacon Aaron Butler said it this morning. The building is just a structure. But what's in the structure? Us. What's in us? The spirit of the Lord. So we ought to learn how to praise him even during this pandemic. No, we can't get, but we're we online, aren't we? God's spirit can be felt online. Regardless of how long that has to be, his spirit can be felt online. I mean, I was moved this morning just by hearing Minister Howard's sermon this morning, as brief as it was. She moved me this morning. I'm just letting you understand. It, 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 we don't necessarily, even though if, if it was possible for us to do it, of course we would be in there. But don't let the brick and mortar stop you. Don't let, don't let the, because if the brick and mortar catches on fire, your faith should not go up in flames. If the brick and mortar catches on fire, if, if, if it blows up, if it has a gas leak and the whole structure goes, goes up, then that means that your praise should be blown up. You should praise God anyhow. So again, church, we have to learn that the importance of all of it is God's presence. And I don't just want God's presence to be stuck in a building. I want God's presence wherever I am, inside or outside a building. Amen. Brother Abraham, job well done. Let's give him another round of applause. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we come at this hour to thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for your ever loving kindness. You have been good to us. Thank you for your presence this morning. It's your presence that we want. It's your presence, Lord, that we, that we want to surround us. And we believe that you are with us. Even while we are online, you with us. Faith cometh by hearing. Even if I don't see anybody, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Lord, we want to thank you for our teacher this morning. Lord, we want to thank you for what we've heard and seen. We want to thank you, Lord, for making us realize it's not the brick and mortar. It's your presence that makes all of the difference in the world. And so, Father, we're just asking you to continue to make your presence known to us and continue, Lord, to be with us. Be with all of our sick this morning. Be with our bereaved this morning. Be with our young people this morning. Wherever they are, whatever situation they in, they can make it. They can make it if they feel your presence with them. And Lord, wherever First Baptist may be, in home, convalescent, in another state, wherever they are, let your presence be known to them. 
And we just want to thank you this morning. We want to thank you for even providing for us in this pandemic. This pandemic does not stop you. You just have your way in the whirlwind. And as the Bible says, the clouds are the dust of your feet. Nothing can stop you. No building. You can come in on a building even when the doors are closed. And we want to thank you for that. Keep coming in to us. Keep coming in to us. And Lord, touching us and giving us what we need to carry on your word, your will, and your way. And Father God, now that we are closing out our Sunday school and entering into worship, we ask that you pray, Lord, that you continue to lift up our sick. We ask, Lord, that you continue to make yourself known to us by showing yourself strong among us. And Lord, when you show yourself strong, then we know your presence is with us. These and all blessings we ask in our son Jesus' name and the people of God said, amen.